Southern governors take far-reaching decisions at their second meeting this year. The next president has to come from the South. Open grazing remains banned and governors have to be notified of any security operation in their states. And more than 100 students kidnapped at a secondary school in Kaduna State a day after another abduction at a medical facility. What's going on? And how can these mass abductions in the state be stopped? Also coming up this morning, Islamic State in West Africa province reportedly takes over a part of Borno State, appoints a governor and taxes residents. Welcome to The Breakfast on Pulse TV Africa. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Musaogi Ogmohan. Great to have you join us again this morning. We hope we uh, have uh, the best of Tuesdays um, all the way uh, through today. Mm, interesting. Wow. Big stories today when we look at our top trending. Let's begin, first of all, with the Southern Governors. Um, we'll talk about this in detail with some analysts representing um, different groups in the Nigeria, the North and the Middle Belt. But for our top trending stories, um, we know this was one of the highly anticipated meetings coming eight weeks after the May 11th meeting in Asaba Delta State, where Southern Governors had reached a couple of resolutions. They met again in Alausa, Lagos. It was about four hours of deliberations you know, with these governors representing southern Nigeria. Um, a few governors were absent, notably. But then, I mean, some of the resolutions reached here, um, I, don't, I don't know how you would see it, but they've said, first of all, that the anti-open grazing law would come into effect on the 1st of September this year. They also agreed, amongst other things, that they must be notified of any security operation before it's conducted in this state. They reached a consensus that the next president of Nigeria must come from the southern part of the country. They've also fixed Lagos as its secretariat to headquarters of the Southern Governors of Forum and their meeting. Reached a couple of other resolutions, congratulated Nigeria security agencies for their work so far, and went on and on and on and on and on. Some things there quite predictable. We expect them to have spoken about, about these things. They also talked about the PIB, Petroleum Industry Bill. They said they stand against the 3% um, for host communities and are, you know, speaking up for the 5%, you know, saying host communities deserve more. And, you know, they just went on listing their points of views on some of these national issues. How do you see it? Oh, well, um, like you said, we would have um, an extended conversation about this this morning. It's one of the things that we're talking about. Um, but uh, from the reactions that I've also seen uh, to this, a lot of people commend them. There's, you know, also one person that I saw an interview who uh, I think his name is uh, Sunny Yabagi, the chairman of ADP, who said that the Southern Governors meeting is a gang up against the North and a gang up against um, uh, President Buhari, um, which, of course, is, you know, it's, it's not a strange response. You know, we've seen things like this. Um, even during the NSAS protests, you know, people, there are certain people who said, oh, it was a, a, a motive to topple the Buhari government. There's, there's always, you know, people who throw out um, those type of statements, you know, they're like uh, dog whistles, you know, to try and uh, rile up a certain part of the country or to, you know, just completely move off course, you know, with, with regards to what the, the, these discussions are about. Um, but there's more people who have commended the Southern governors for taking these decisions. There's also people who have uh, questioned uh, with regards to the PIB why the House of Representatives members, you know, had a different opinion from what the governors are saying. Uh, the the um, House of Rep members, National Assembly members from the Southern states, why did they have a totally different opinion with regards to the uh, PIB? Why did they allow uh, for the 3% uh, or 5% and also for the 30% for frontier states, as that's been uh, named? Um, and then the governors are having, you know, uh, their own decision. So um, these are things that we will open up a little bit more. Um, uh, sometime this morning on the show, we're going to be having two, you know, very interesting persons joining us. One from Pandef and another from the Northern Elders Forum, I believe, uh, joining us to have uh, discussions on this and see where we go with it, you know, from, the, from here. But um, I will, of course, once again, like I said yesterday, commend the Southern, uh, South, South, the Southern governors for coming together at least for these uh, decisions, for these resolutions, and I think that they are taking steps that they believe are um, a lot better for their states and for the people you know, that they govern over. Mm. The next story, security. This one shook me to my core. And we know about the state of insecurity in Nigeria and how it seemed to be taking a turn for the worse with Boko Haram members pledging allegiance to IS Eswap, right? 
The news we've heard that broke out yesterday is that ISWAP has appointed administrators for Bornu State. Now, listen to this. Uh, Boko Haram and Islamic State of West African Province have appointed a governor for parts of Bornu State. Now, this obviously goes against claims by the federal government that they have, you know, totally eliminated Boko Haram. Boko Haram has been decimated and that no terrorist controls any parts of Nigeria. But we're seeing breaking news here that ISWAP has appointed a governor and an administrator for Bornu State. And according to... Um, a report by PR Nigeria. The name of this governor is Abakaka. Now, this Abakaka will work with other people who were appointed by ISWAP, and that this Abakaka's government has the structure of a normal functioning government, right? It will impose taxes, it will impose levies, it has its own judiciary, and I'm sure definitely it's the Sharia law, maybe even an extremist form of that that they will practice. You know, basically, they have banned you know, fishing, farming in some of these communities in Borno State. But this new government of terrorism imposed in Borno State would now begin, listen to this, collecting 5,000 naira monthly. And that's from traders and farmers, while people who fish, fishermen, will have to pay 2,000 naira per bag of fish among other levies. Is this not just weird that there's a whole st structure, a whole government of terrorism functioning, living and breathing in Bornu State. And this is happening right under the nose of the Bornu State governor and APC governor, Baba Ganazulum. Do, oh. I mean, does this not just mean that there are lots of questions that should be asked, especially of the governor, how an APC governor, you know, with all the claims of we're defeating Boko Haram, I mean, look at all our track record of all our achievements in power. And then can you just imagine well, what, um, what, what this is like? A well, separate government of terrorism in Bornu State. For me, first of all, it doesn't really matter um, what political party the governor is, um, APC, PDP, Ab ABGA, YPP, whatever it is. You know, the fact that um, you know, his political party doesn't matter to me at this point. Um, what I'm more concerned about is, you know, how true this is, you know, and we hope that there would be a response from the Bornu State government and from the Nigerian government, you know, to, you know, these claims. Um, it's also not shocking. Uh, for me, we've come from a place where there were claims in 2014 that Boko Haram was in control of, you know, numerous local government areas. Um, there were also claims that they had been, you know, decimated, defeated. You know, the time that the flag was taken to, you know, Asura to, you know, presented President Mohamed Buhari as a sign that the, you know, terrorist group had been defeated and, you know, those regions had been taken back. But over time, we've gotten to see that that's not entirely true. Um, because these groups have continued to, you know, terrorize Nigerians, they've continued to kidnap, continue to kill, um, and, um, you know, wipe out families, villages, and, and, and the likes. Um, so it's obvious that we still haven't gotten really, really far from where we were in 2014, or even in 2012 or 2010. It's still not very, very different. There are still these terrorist groups, there are still these persons, these animals, you know, walking around in those parts of Nigeria in control. Um, I'm Really, I personally only feel bad for the people, and I don't even know what the reaction of the people of Borno State uh, will be um, at a time like this. They, 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 it says that they're in charge of about five local governments. Um, I don't know what those people and their lives are like currently. What their stance is really also on, um, you know, these groups and these persons in their communities who have decided to appoint a governor and start to tax them. Um, have they completely, and these, these um, Nigerian citizens now, have they completely given up you know, on the Nigerian government's ability to rescue them from, from, from these persons? Or have they accepted that maybe uh, this, you know, this is you know, part of their new reality and they will pay their taxes and continue to live you know, you know, with these persons? Um, have they accepted it as a new normal? Because they've, they've experienced these things for more than a decade now. They've been in terrorist you know, um, controlled areas for more than a decade now. So, I'm not sure what exactly their lives are like um, and how they can ever recover from this. Uh, for a long time, you know, I've always spoken about what their reaction is towards government's failure to protect them. And, and I've always criticized them and I will always continue to say it. I feel bad for them, but I've always criticized their reaction towards a failure of government, obviously. Um, and, you know, when there's some of all these fake Islamist teachings, how do they react? It doesn't seem like they count it in any way. It also doesn't seem like they are actively... This is the same Borno State. It wasn't two weeks or three weeks ago that the president visited and there was a large crowd of people that came out to visit him. Uh, people eventually said, oh, that the crowd was rented. But whatever. It doesn't matter whether it was rented or not. Have you forgotten not. that we practice a um, government of, of, of criticize and go to jail? 
no, I mean, no, but it, it doesn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't stop Georgia. the people from. It shouldn't stop the people from still being able to voice their concerns and being able to say that you know this this state government has failed us with regard to security. So I feel bad for them. Um, I don't know what next we will see. I don't know you know how much worse it might get. But um, there is no there is no government spokesperson that would be able to boldly come out and say, oh, we've done very well with security. They keep saying it. I don't know if they believe the things that they say, but they keep saying it, that they've done exceptionally well with security. My own, my heart, you know, really just goes out to those people in those areas, and including Zamfara and Southern Kaduna and every other place that is still currently being terrorized. We will be talking about another kidnap um, again this morning in Kaduna State, uh, which is one of many, 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 you know, um, 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 of these incidents that have taken place in just 2021 alone. Um, imagine what has happened in the last six, five years. So we're not in a good place. Um, these conversations will continue until there is, you know, a change and there is something different. And if those northern governors do not decide that, oh, now the southern governors have made their own resolutions, maybe we should make our own resolutions. We should come together and make our own resolutions with regards to our security, and re with regards to being able to protect the uh, lives and property of people and indigents of our states. They probably should do that. They should. Um, and, you know, maybe also push for their own state police and see where they, what they're able to achieve with that. All right, so our final top trending story this morning is about Namdi Kanu. There's a group called the United Nations Watch, and they say they're the only accredited non-governmental organization by the UN. So they're basically asking questions, and this is all about um, the arrest of IPOB leader Namdi Kanu. So they went on to say on their Twitter account that they um, refuse to... Um, the Nigerian government has refused to provide any details about the arrest of Namdi Kanu and, you know, pointed out the contradiction that Nigeria is one of the countries that sits on the committee that oversees um, human rights and, uh, you know, all that issue. It, so it's, it seems like a, a point where people need clarity. I mean, even the British High Commissioner in Abuja um, made statements about this. They have, have said that they will provide consular assistance to Namdi Kanu um, because of his uh, British citizenship. They also clarified that they did not, you know, have anything to do with the arrest of Namdi Kanu. He was not arrested on UK soil. He was not extradited from that country. They have no idea how that happened. And they asked questions as well. They're saying that there are questions to be asked regarding the legality of Namdi Kanu's arrest and that they're seeking further clarification from the Nigerian government also saying that um, that's the UK now, that they expect that the trial of Namdi Kanu would be free, would be fair, and would go through every legal um, process and you know, follow due process. So that's basically where we are. Still questions about Namdi Kanu. The government has refused to um, say specifically how exactly Namdi Kanu was arrested. His family members say he was abducted. Even IPOB members say Namdi Kanu was abducted from Kenya, that there was no legal process. And even though Lai Mohammed came out to say it's one of the most classy um, security operations that has ever been done in the history of Nigeria. Area. But these questions still arise, and I feel that the government owes it to us. How exactly was Namdi Kanu arrested? Oh, well, good luck with uh, expecting uh, you know, an actual explanation from the current administration. Um, and also good luck with hearing anything different from Lai Mohammed. Um, but you know, for me, maybe there's people that these type of things will excite. The you know, UN Watch, I think that's what they're called. Yes. Um, when they put out statements like that, I think I remember they also put out a statement during the um, NSARS uh, protest after the NSARS protest, you know, that, you know, hasn't really, really been able to you know, achieve much, you know. So, you know, I, I expect that they will put out their statements, but what uh, power they have, I'm not sure, you know, and how, how much influence they also have with regards to Namdekanu's case or any other case in, in Nigeria, I'm not really, really sure. These are only, you know, these are things that they are expected to put out. Same thing with Amnesty International, you know, put out a statement every now and then. They don't have any powers to influence. Um, so much. Um, so there is that. Um, there's also, um, it's only, you know, th th this has also gotten publicity to, uh, there's a guy, let me quickly find his name, the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General of the Government of Alberta, Canada. His name is uh, Kelechi Madu, uh, who also put out a statement yesterday and uh, completely blasted the uh, Nigerian government and um, Abubakar Malami. Um, there's a statement online, really, 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 really <laughs> blasted, didn't hold back any words. 
um, you know, expressing his disgust with the way that the government has acted and, um, you know, reacted towards uh, the Namdi Kanu um, issue and, you know, said Malami is a disgrace uh, to the court of law, to the, you know, um, you know, whole judicial process and some of all of that. Um, so, yes, it's got, gotten us as usual. Very, very bad publicity from the international community. But I'm sure that Nigeria doesn't care or the current administration doesn't really care much about what those uh, people outside say. Um, they only would be bothered when it has uh, to do with uh, uh, loans. You know, that's when the international community is relevant. The international community is not relevant when it shares its views on misrule or shares its views on disrespect or abuse of human rights and uh, privileges. It's, um, not, it's not relevant at that point. You know? But when we are seeking loans and when we are seeking international support for one you know, thing or the other, uh, we reach out to them. So, um, once again, um, it's gotten us bad publicity as always. But I don't really, you know, hold, you know, those statements, you know, uh, to heart. You know, I just see them as expected that they will put out statements like that. They don't really have that much influence on, um, you know, on these cases um, or any other case, you know, that the Nigerian government um, decides to, to take action. Yes, they, 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 they might not be able to um, weigh or wield any strong influence regarding the outcome of the decisions. But we know that information is power. Neither do yeah. we have a power to force or, you know, the hand of the government to take a stance on security situations. But the fact that we're talking about these things, raising our voices and lending our voices to these things, do, does have some power, does have some weight in stirring the course of conversations towards justice, fairness, and equity. So, well, yes. Absolutely. Anyway, we'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, publisher of uh, CKN News, will be joining us to go through the papers this morning and see what major stories have made the headlines. We'll be back.